Chemical Kinetics, Part 3, Integrated Rate Laws. As you learn more about writing rate laws in this video, you will discover the integrated rate laws for zero, first, and second order reactions. You will also learn the half-life equations for these rate laws. Understanding these integrated rate laws will allow you to use graphing methods for determining whether a reaction is zero, first, or second order with respect to its reactants. Whereas the rate law, or differential rate law, expressed how the rate of a reaction depended on the reactant's concentration, the integrated rate law expresses how the reactant concentration depends on time. Each rate law has a corresponding integrated rate law to match. These are determined from using a calculus process called integration. Don't worry so much about that, but if you were wondering, there it is. In this course, we will only consider the integrated rate laws for first order, second order, and zero order reactions. For a generic first order rate law, the rate is equal to a constant K times the molar concentration of reactant A. The integrated form of this rate law for first order is the natural log of the molar concentration of A equal to negative the rate constant times the time plus the natural log of the initial molar concentration of A. Note that when the integrated rate law is written in this way, it is in the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. As a result of plotting a natural log of a versus t gives you a linear plot, and it has a slope equal to negative k and a y-intercept of the natural log of a initial. If you want to determine if a reaction is first order with respect to a certain reactant, plot the natural log of its molar concentration versus time. If the plot is linear, then it's first order. If it's not linear, then it cannot be first order with respect to that reactant. Using this example from a previous video, we can graphically verify that it is first order and determine the value of the rate constant using our understanding of the first order integrated rate law. If we plotted these data and saw a linear plot, it wouldn't be first order. Hint, we'll learn later that that means it's zero order. But if we take the natural log of the concentration and plot that versus time, ah, we see this linear plot. That verifies that this is first order with respect to dinitrogen pentoxide. If we determine the slope of this line, we can change its sign and get the value of the rate constant. This has already been done in this example, but this is a great way to determine rate constants from experimental data. Another useful concept in kinetics is the idea of half-life. The time needed to reach half of the initial concentration of a reactant is called its half-life. For a first-order reaction, using the definition of half-life and the integrated first-order rate law, you can solve for t and determine the half-life. For first-order, half-life is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by the rate constant. Notice that in a first-order reaction, the half-life is constant and does not depend on concentration. This has some useful applications when studying radioactive nuclear decay, which is another type of first order reaction, but more on that later. Let's look at second order rate laws now. The integrated rate law for second order is 1 over molar concentration of A equal to the rate constant times time plus 1 over the initial molar concentration of A. In this slope intercept form we see that a plot of 1 over A concentration versus time is linear, having a slope of K and a y-intercept of 1 over initial A concentration. If you plot this and get a straight line, you know it's second order. If you plot this and it isn't linear, then you know it's not second order. Also, using the same process described earlier, the half-life for a second order reaction can be determined, and it is equal to 1 over K times the initial molar concentration of A. Notice that second order half-life does have a concentration dependence, unlike the first order half-life. Anyway, here we have another reaction and some data. Let's try the first order integrated rate law plot, natural log of C4H6 concentration versus time, and let's also try the second order integrated rate law plot, 1 over C4H6 concentration versus time. Here we go. On the first order plot to the left, 
we do not get a linear plot, so it can't be first order with respect to C4H6. But on the right, the second order plot, we do see a straight line. That means the reaction is second order with respect to C4H6. This means that the slope of this line on the right will give us our rate constant as well. How convenient. Lastly, let's look at the zero order integrated rate law. The integrated form of the zero order rate law is the molar concentration of A equal to negative the rate constant times time plus the initial molar concentration of A. In this slope intercept form, we see that a plot of molar concentration of A versus time is linear. The slope is equal to negative K, and the y-intercept is the initial molar concentration of A. Doesn't that make sense? If a reaction is zero order with respect to A, then the rate of the reaction is constant and doesn't depend on the concentration of A. The change in A concentration over time is the constant, and the curve has constant slope. Half-life for zero order reaction does, does have a concentration dependence, though and it is equal to the initial molar concentration of A over 2K. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to review these three integrated rate laws and the processes used to graphically determine the order of a reactant, please re-watch this video and refer to the appropriate pages in your textbook. Or leave a comment for this video if you have any questions. See you next time.